Um, <clears throat> so thanks for coming. Um, this is uh, this is our story of how we got to Cloud Foundry. Um, so I would start by saying that um, you know we had similar problems, uh, and but obviously we're at the Cloud Foundry Summit, so we came to similar uh, solutions as everyone else. Um, but uh, I'll give you a brief history of DemandBridge. We are a uh, small technology company um, that has a large but kind of a niche customer base in the print industry. And um, we're a Java Spring shop. Um, and uh, we have a, uh, our main product is a B2B e-commerce platform um, that uh, our customers use and resell to their customers. Um, and, uh, and it has about a 20 year code base um, that, that I've worked on for about 12 years. Um, and you know, it, it's, 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 been through a lot, um, and we've we've uh, we've added a lot to it, and we've not uh, refactored a whole lot with it. Um, so we had the same problems that most of the Cloud Foundry adoption stories uh, start with. Um, we had a large, outdated, monolithic application. Um, deploys were awful, um, and we wanted to scale, evolve, move faster, risk less, and deploy more. Um, but where we differ, I think. Um, from, from most people, and especially from the people that are highlighted in the keynotes. Um, and, and Abby and Chip helped us out um, by highlighting uh, Comcast, who, uh, Comcast is amazing, and we followed them through their whole journey. Um, but, you know, they're boasting 2,500, 3,000 developers, uh, 40,000 app instances. Um, we have four developers and uh, zero dedicated ops. Um, and that's not something that we tout. It's something that, frankly, um, it, it gave us kind of a complex uh, where we we didn't feel like we belonged, and so we would hear these keynotes at the Spring Conference and uh, and now at the Cloud Foundry Summit as we were kind of evaluating, and you know we kind of felt like this stuff, a lot of the cutting edge technology was just out of reach for us. Um, so that's that's uh, we, we we tried to remain you know relevant. We tried to keep up to date with things that were going on, but. But we just we just couldn't touch it. Um, so we we were on our own, and the reason for the zero dedicated ops was uh, we we were for a long time the software development arm of a print distributorship, who are now you know w one of our many customers. Um, but the most we could ever hope for was that our application server and our database VMs were online and connected to the internet, and everything else was in our hands. Um, so you know we we cobbled together what we could and. Um, uh, you know, it, it worked wonderfully for us for a long time. Um, so due to our kind of licensing restrictions, mostly on our WebLogic server, um, we were stuck at Java 1.5. And that wasn't a problem for a very long time um, because of backwards compatibility. And, and Spring did a great job uh, of, of allowing us to use some of the newer features. but. Um, we, 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 we would attend the spring conference every year just to kind of stay up to date. And uh, over time, the spring conference even became less and less relevant to us uh, because the newer things were just not backwards compatible and we couldn't take advantage of, of the latest spring framework. Um, and that was, that was a problem. And um, I think that one of the, 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 the light bulbs that went off was um, we kept hearing about this this monolith, and we're like, "What's wrong with the monolith? Um, we've got a monolith, and we, you know, it's, it works great for us." Um, uh, but we got to a point, and, we, and we're hearing about Cloud Foundry. We're hearing about uh, the the infancy of Cloud Foundry from Pivotal, and it was it was it was amazing. But we just could, didn't see where it fit, um, and Spring Boot as well. Uh, we, we we saw Spring Boot come, you know, from its infancy up uh, to to a point where it was it was like a mainstream conversation at the Spring Conference. Um, but we just didn't see a fit for it, and 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 we had a big giant web logic server, and that was all we ever knew, um, and and it didn't like us doing anything new and and, and fancy, um, and so so I think the the light bulb went off when we were sitting at one of the spring conferences, and and it was like everything that was thrown out of the keynote speech was just uh, over our heads. It was just something that we couldn't reach out for, uh, but the monolith was resounding. Um, like we, we've got one of those. That's that's great. Uh, and then the it was the first time I heard the term technical debt. I said we've got that too. <laughs> that's 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 
the only thing we can take away from this this uh, conference. Uh, so I think it was when the the Spring Cloud Suite um, really uh, came to the forefront that we started to realize maybe we could take advantage of, of some of these things. Um, maybe we could leverage some of this new technology. We started to wrap our heads around the idea of 12-factor and the idea of maybe breaking apart some of the pieces of our application and, and hosting them elsewhere. Um, so now we kind of met back up with everybody that was going on this, this Cloud Foundry journey. We've got a problem. We know what it is. It's the monolith. Um, we, we're no longer defending our monolith. It's, it's, we realize it's the problem. Uh, so we have to learn what microservices are, what containers are. Um, but, you know, okay, let's, let's do it. We don't have a choice. We were running into to, um, performance issues, and we didn't have a solution. There was, there was no upgrading the monolith. There was no upgrading our WebLogic server. There was no, there was no hardware we could throw at the problem. Um, so maybe we can use Spring Boot. Maybe, maybe that's our answer. Um, and Kim, uh, who's here, all of our developers are here with us today, <laughs> which is not a stretch. Um, so Kim, Kim said we came back from the whatever the latest spring conference was. It really was the one that you know technical debt monolith. Okay, we're on the same page now. And she said I, we just have to build one of these things to try it out. Um, and we, we saw the benefits of it. Um, but uh, we're like, what do we do with these things? It, spring Boot is great. It's going to allow us to use newer technologies. It's going to allow us to 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 not worry about the 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 nightmare of our dev web logic server versus our prod web logic server but what do we do with it um, so for a while this this thing which we forced into production we forced uh, uh, you know ourselves to use it it just lived on an otherwise empty VM um, with Java installed uh, which was scary and we thought to ourselves like there's there's no way we can have more than one of these things um, so so what do we do um, so we, we spent a few months playing around with Docker, um, and, and the idea of containerization uh, and, and that whole methodology was a no-brainer, awesome, but that just really abstracted the, the problem of where to put these things. Um, so we, 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 we realized that without that dedicated ops, without, without, without DevOps um, uh, be, be becoming more a part of our, of our culture, uh, we have no way of managing these other applications, these, these or these other environments. We we have no way of managing a, 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 a Docker machine. Um, we we ordered a couple pizzas, but that that didn't work. Um, we were just sitting there eating cold pizza. Uh, but but we realized that we needed to solve this problem. We needed to we needed to 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 branch out. But we didn't know who to hire. Um, because what are what it, what is the solution that we're going after? Um, we didn't want to hire someone fresh and say, "Here, help us solve this problem." We wanted to say, "Here, are are we going to do? Is is Docker the answer? Is are, is is Swarm good enough? Um, or are we going to go with something like Mesos or Kubernetes?" Um, you know, there, there there were all these different things we were weighing to try and find. Okay, how do we narrow down our our search for uh, someone to join the team and help us move into the future? Um, as we were evaluating the complexities of Mesos and, and the complexities of Kubernetes at the time, and this was, this was in its infancy, and I know that it's still very complicated, but it's also more mainstream now. This was, we were just scratching the surface at that time, and we knew we were in over our heads. Um, but I guess serendipitously, uh, we received an invitation to the Cloud Foundry Summit, and this was, we didn't even realize there was a Cloud Foundry Summit. We had been hearing about Cloud Foundry from Pivotal at the Spring Conference, and that was awesome. Um, again, we, we didn't really see how it fit, and we actually talked to Pivotal. They came and met with us and, and talked about our, our infrastructure, and I, I think we came away with more questions um, than, than, than answers, but they were extremely helpful. Um, more questions about, about ourselves and about the way that we had, had structured our own application and, and how we could even move it into the future. Um, but we saw this invitation to the Cloud Foundry Summit, and it was an open source Cloud Foundry, the, the, the Cloud Foundry Foundation. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't one vendor. All the vendors were represented, and it was, it was, it was eye-opening. And we thought, if we're looking at Mises and Kubernetes. Why not try out uh, Cloud Foundry and see if, see if an open source Cloud Foundry, you know, is, is something that we could achieve. Is something that we could maybe hire someone to to help us out with and join our team and 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 build. Um, and so we attended the Cloud Foundry Summit, and we got there, and it was, it was awesome. It was eye-opening. It was. Um, 
it was uh, the, 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 you know, the big lights and the big presentations about how wonderful, uh, you know, CF push is. Um, and, uh, and, and, and what really spoke to us, especially uh, over the, the, the Docker solutions, was how it just naturally took our cloud, our Spring Boot apps, and 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 just Spring in general. And 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 I remember listening to Ansi uh, after you know we, we were we were touting his his famous haiku, um, listening to him give us give a talk about how. Cloud Foundry wants to, to to take your app and 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 love it as much as you do and and, and take care of it and 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 we thought um, you know, that's perfect because when we were trying out Docker it was uh, it was it was <laughs> it was it wasn't pretty um, as far as as far as what we were able to do with it and as far as the image that we got um, it wasn't so much the 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 big beautiful ship with all the containers neatly stacked up it was. Uh, it was more like the the second season of The Wire, um, if anyone is familiar, uh, with you know union reps uh, losing containers and I don't know it was uh, it was not it, it it wasn't the the nice wholesome story that that Cloud Foundry tells. So we get to the CF summit, awesome. Um, we want to try and do open source CF because uh, monetarily um, the way that the way that things broke down when we t did talk to Pivotal. Um, was was such that for such a small company, and I realize that now there's probably so many more options, you know, different pricing tiers, and there are also so many more, uh, so many more more you know certified um, distributions, which is which is awesome. At the time, there weren't many, um, and 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 we wanted to check out the the open source side of things. Um, so we got there, and uh, as part of as part of the keynote. Um, they made an announcement about brand new uh, uh, Cloud Foundry support for the Azure hypervisor. And we thought, wow, we didn't even know that was a question we needed to ask, but perfect, because we use Azure, and uh, I guess now we can use Cloud Foundry. Um, so uh, after, the, after the keynote, we, we ran to the vendor booth, um, or the, the, the vendor area, and we made a beeline for the Azure booth. And said, you, you guys are who we need to talk to. We're on Azure. We want to do Cloud Foundry. Tell us how. Um, I said, it's, it's so easy, it's so easy. You just click the install PCF button. And, uh, and we said, that's, that's awesome, <laughs> I'm glad that that works. Um, but it just, you know, for, for us, unfortunately, that, that, that model wasn't what, what we thought was sustainable for us. And, and we probably weren't looking at it right, but we were so focused on the, the open source side of things. And, and, and we only saw that as that our only option for Cloud Foundry. Uh, monetarily, but also our ability to scale at a very small number of apps uh, steadily um, and, and, and have it be, you know, cost effective. Uh, so I said, no, 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 <laughs> we, we, we're, we're not looking to install PCF right now. We were hoping to, to check out Open Source Cloud Foundry. And I, and I think she said, oh, yikes, uh, I, don't, I don't want anything to do with that. I, I don't I think she actually said yikes, but the general, uh, the general theme in the vendor area uh, when we talked about open source Cloud Foundry at the time, and this was one of the earlier CF summits, I think it was 2015, 2016, but the, the, the feedback we got was like, yikes, that's really hard, good luck. Um, and that was kind of a bummer for us, but we were, we were determined. Um, and so we tried to absorb as much as we could, and then uh, we went back to our hotel rooms and banged away at Bosch Light, um, and that was a, a head scratcher. Um, but we came back, and we, like I said, we 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 were we were kind of a little bit beaten down, but um, there was a, there were there were so many things to learn at at the summit. And uh, that year, Dr. Nick was the MC, and he's larger than life, and. Uh, and, and also, and I see you guys are wearing the blue shirts, and I like the blue a lot. This is a nice bright blue, uh, but they had a bright red shirt, Stark and Wayne, and they were everywhere. There were like 50 of them. And I don't think I'm exact. I mean, I, I guess that's an exaggeration, but, uh, but they, were the, they were like the authority. And so we said, okay, we, we spent all night banging away at Bosch Light, trying to get this thing working. Nothing's working. Uh, let's go talk to these Stark and Wayne guys. They seem like an authority. And so we hammered them with questions, and they, uh, I think we wore on their patience, I'm sure. Um, but I think, it, like, the solutions to our problems and the, and, and the answers to our questions 
were so complex that we, we just, we realized like, listen, we, we can't do this alone. We understand that now. We, we need to find someone with experience to, to help us. We, we realize that. It's not something that we could shepherd through with, with, with someone that has a little bit of knowledge of CF and maybe could join our team. We need a, a much bigger presence, a much, much more expertise in order for us to make this happen. Um, but we are still in this mindset of, like, do, do we deserve this technology? We're so small. And, and everything we hear, and, and certainly everything we heard at the time, is these stories of these big, huge enterprises. Um, and it's amazing, and we need that. And that's so important to make sure that we have a, a, you know, a platform that is, that is you know, uh, full of life and, and, can, and can, you know, carry our, our platform and our, our, uh, our, our business into the future. But, um, but we didn't feel like we kind of really belonged. So we, we said, okay, Stark and Wayne, these guys, are, these guys are the authorities. We need to find someone like that, but who caters to small businesses. Um, so we, we, we racked our brains and we searched and searched. Um, and then months later, we would tell the story. And uh, it was a joke because um, someone, I, it, it was Brian, it was, someone came to us and said, look, we need to have a talk. Like, you keep saying that, you know, you were looking for a Stark and Wayne for the little guys and, you know, haha, but we ended up with Stark and Wayne. And they said, what are we doing wrong with our um, marketing? Because why didn't you just come to us? And, and I said, it, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't you guys. It was it was us. It was this mentality. It was this complex. It was it was this um, just feeling like we were too small to deserve something like this. Feeling like we were too small to to play in this uh, community. Um, but we did end up reaching out to Stark and Wayne uh, after walking in circles for a month, um, and they were super accommodating. Um, they answered all of our questions. Uh, they 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 walked through you know and level set expectations with us. Um, they talked about how, you know, how complex the, the, the you know, certainly Bosch is and just the whole, the, the maintenance of Cloud Foundry and how you need it to be a living, breathing thing and you need someone to be maintaining it constantly for you. And so, you know, uh, whether you're open source or you're through one of these distributions, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to bite off and it's not, it, it's just not something you can do alone. But luckily, they could help, um, and and we and we believed that, um, and so we went through a bunch of different options. But we ended up saying, like, let's just th this this is what we need. Um, and by the way, meanwhile, we're having all sorts of of uh, performance issues, and our customers are noticing. And like I said, we we didn't have another solution, um, so we said, guys, please help us. Um, and they did, and they sent a couple people to 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 kind of immerse us in Bosch and CF, um, and yeah. Which year was this? I think it was 2016, the end of 2016, was when we were doing our evaluation, um, and when we, when, we, when we first started down the journey. I think it was, it was maybe even January of 2017 that we started the actual build with Stark and Wayne. Um, so, so they, they, you know, we, we, we partnered up, and, uh, and they came out, and, and like I said, they sent two rock stars to help us out. Um, and they, they sat with us for an, an entire week um, and built out our Cloud Foundry environment. Uh, but they built it out with us, um, and, I, you know, we, we took what we could from what they were teaching us. Uh, but they also taught us best practices, and they taught us, um, you know, uh, how to use uh, a Cloud Foundry responsibly. Um, and they, they left us with much more than just our Cloud Foundry environments. They left us with um, Concourse, which is our second greatest love these days, um, next to Cloud Foundry. Uh, but, but other things like Safe and Vault um, and, and, and lots of different community contributions uh, that, that they had vetted. Um, and it was awesome. It was, uh, it was eye-opening to see um, you know, the, the, the inner workings and, and how uh, deep the knowledge and the expertise was um, that, that these guys were able to share with us. Uh, so after a week, um, we had a dev and a prod Cloud Foundry up and running in Azure. Um, we, we threw our proof of concepts at it. Easy, simple. Um, we threw our Spring Cloud you know, suite at it. Um, 
could not have been easier. It 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 just worked, um, and 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 it was it was um, this this parting of ways when they left. Uh, they 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 turned the keys over to us, and and it wasn't here you go goodbye and good luck. It was all right. Let you are you, you know are you ready? Let's do this together, and um, you know it was it was awesome. Uh, we 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 really felt like. We had a, a partner, and, and you know, we had Cloud Foundry, but we had the backing of Stark and Wayne, and that was that was excellent. Um, so now we had it. Now we started to use it, and we we, we threw everything we could at it, um, and and everything that we had seen at the Cloud Foundry summits we attended, um, it came to life. It was it was all real. It was the the CF push, awesome. Um, all of the anecdotes about. Um, the ease of, of, of mapping routes and, and binding services and scaling apps. It was all it was all real and, and the, uh, the the fact that Cloud Foundry just kind of takes care of your app and makes sure that it's still running uh, it was great. We we kind of take that for granted sometimes. Uh, sometimes we we had an app that was failing every ten minutes uh, that we for months we didn't realize because it, you know Cloud Foundry is just bringing it back up before the the, the the second instance was failing, and we, you know, so we're we're going to get better at that. But, uh, um, but yeah, no, it, Cloud Foundry did everything that it promised, um, and and that was amazing, and it was amazing for us because, uh, you know, it, I, I think it was an it was emotional. Uh, I know for me, um, and I think more than more than just me, to, to sit back and say, you know, we we. With Cloud Foundry and especially with, with the backing of Stark and Wayne, you know we have the same infrastructure as these big enterprises now. It's 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 a matter of Diego cells at this point, and I don't know that was that was a huge huge jump for us uh, from you know a couple years ago uh, when we were we were really doubting ourselves. So um, that was awesome. Uh, it, it it felt really great, and the most important thing was that with four developers. Um, we were able to just run full speed and not worry about our application, not worry about uh, the, the 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 application server, the the infrastructure. It was just throw as much as you could at it, um, and 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 make as much improvement to the system as possible. Um, and and we were able to do that. It was it was awesome. Um, take advantage of all the latest features of Java, all the all the latest the latest uh, Spring frameworks, and, and and everything else that we've been dying to get our hands on, and and like I said, not worry about how to manage these things. Um, so, you know, where are we now? Uh, we have a lot of code to, to rewrite. We, we, st we still have a monolith, um, uh, but our code base and our application architecture is vibrant and, and it's a pleasure to work with and that was not the case um, for a very long time. Uh, so, it, it's a, it's, it, was, it was in the span of from getting up and running with Cloud Foundry to throwing as much as we could at at the the, the environment, it was it was a few months, and and we as a team just had a complete 180 in, in our just our approach to development and in, in our quality of life. It was just it was just excellent. Um, so um, where are we now? So we're 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 Cloud Foundry users now. Uh, it's a totally different experience to be at the summit um, and to be at the spring conference too because we you know we 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 have shared this journey um, with these big companies you know we, we've had similar transformations albeit at a much smaller scale um, and and it and it feels great um, it's you know we still i i know i i slip back into this this mindset of you know oh, you guys are talking about things that are just way way out of my league but um but you know we 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 have a great foundation and 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 we have a lot of uh, a lot of pride in 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 our environment in and in you know our application and where where like I said we didn't for a long time um, so where we started was we had that large monolithic application um, long painful deploys. And the need to scale, evolve, move faster, risk less, and deploy more. And so now we have a smaller, um, outdated, monolithic shell of an application. Um, you know, we've been strangling that thing as much as we could. We were, before we even heard the term, we were like, let's let's just get 
ripped this thing apart. Um, and we had, we had a means to do it, and that was awesome. Uh, so we have one occasional deploy. Uh, it's, 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 it's not every sprint that we deploy our monolith. Uh, but we have now 83 app instances and, and 53 unique apps out there, That's which is mind-blowing to even think about how, how we would manage that a few years ago. Um, and we're deploying them constantly, these, these, these apps, and we're pushing them with very little risk to prod. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're doing the same, the same things that we hear up on, on the main stage, just, like I said, at a smaller scale. Um, when we started, we had four developers and we had zero dedicated ops. Now we still have four developers, uh, but we have 10,000 plus ops, I like to say. Um, which is, which translates to one primary resource at Stark and Wayne, um, 35 members of the collective who support us regularly, uh, and then all of the Cloud Foundry community members, which is, which is awesome. And we, we work with our resource, Kevin, uh, uh, and, 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 and so many more on a daily basis, um, and, and we, we reach out to the collective regularly. And, and through Stark and Wayne, we have contributed to, uh, worked with, and found answers from the community, you know, the whole time. Uh, it's, it's, it's been great. Um, so, you know, what's next? Uh, we, have, we have a lot of work to do with our monolith still, um, but we have the answer. Like, it's just a matter of, plugging away and we're we are pushing more code uh, th than we ever have and we'll continue to do that um, so we, we want to work towards continuous delivery and and we're not shy uh, you know about uh, pursuing that anymore um, because you know that once we once we got over this hurdle um, you know I, I think anything's possible um, and then we want to move the rest of we, we have other applications and 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 now with all the to talk about CFCR, um, that's that's a reality for us. I think, um, you know, these guys were talking about Kubo when it was first announced, and, and how can we like, what can we, how can we get you guys up and running, and and and, and let's take advantage of this. And uh, you know, I, I'm confident that we can and we will. So um, yeah, that's that was our journey. So, so, <clears throat> Jared. Yeah. I mean, we've been working for. Two years together, at least. Uh, you know, how have the production outages been? Um, it's funny you ask that. Uh, so there, there have been production outages. We're lucky in that we have a um, we we have maintenance windows regularly. We're not we're not always always up uh, or, or always guaranteed up. Um, but production outages, we've had one, uh, and, and, but then. Uh, We've had to reach out in like kind of an emergency scenario, I think three times total um, over the past two years, which is incredible. Um, so yeah, that's that's something that I, I don't know. We, I feel like we, we knock on a lot of wood. Um, so yeah. Anything else? Yes. Can you talk about uh, or expand upon how the quality of life has improved for your developers? Sure. Um, I mean, it, it, working with working with our Java Java one five app, uh, it, not just not just anecdotally, not just in a you know oh you know we're we're not able to use the latest and the greatest uh, uh, the features of Java in Spring, uh, but but that old code base was just painful to work with, and and it, we were not able to to innovate, um, and 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 it and it took a toll on us, I think. Uh, as developers, uh, we we weren't happy. I, I, you know, we were happy to work together. And we have a great team, but we weren't happy with the code, with the with the application. We are now. It's a pleasure. It really is. Um, so, the, I, from that perspective, our quality of life has improved greatly. I think. Has productivity improved, and, and can you quantify that at all? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know that I have any metrics necessarily, other than. The amount of the amount of code that's out there right now, that and, and the amount of code that goes out every day, uh, but we're doing a lot more with less. Uh, I mean, it's it's uh, we still have four developers, but uh, but we used to we used to 
pull in so many uh, so many extra resources to to verify our large you know monolith deploys and we we don't we don't need to do that anymore we we are able to to do uh, you know r rapid deployment and, 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 and very simple verification of smaller services um, and, and it taxes less of the team um, so we're just everyone's more productive I think um, but also we tackle problems from a, from a much different angle now um, we, we don't we we're very quick to push out you know simple solutions that would be very complex to build into our uh, our, our you know enterprise archive so Certainly. Yeah. So we knew we, we knew at the time that we had to do something, um, and and that we were we were having production issues, performance issues, and 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 our customers were noticing. And so we knew we had to throw some amount of money at this thing. We didn't have a lot, but um, you know, it there was no there was no next tier of hardware for a web logic server that made sense um, so yeah the, the cloud foundry is not cheap um, you know open source isn't free uh, the the infrastructure cost is 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 you know significant but once once you have the brain you know once you have once you have the the, the foundation we can scale forever now um, and and we can scale you know with a fixed amount of you know resource and, and support from from Stark and Wayne, and that's you know we're we're not going to um, you know out, outgrow ourselves anytime soon. So uh, so yeah, the 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 footprint of Cloud Foundry um, certainly much much larger than our, our Web Logic and Apache and, and Oracle servers. Um, but this is our future, and 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 it's it was the certainly the most cost effective option that we had found. Um, for for something that's going to take us, you know, for as long as we can see into the future, if that makes sense. Yeah. So as far as our Cloud Foundry uh, environment goes, Stark and Wayne is. Our you know, operations resource. Um, they are they're monitoring and maintaining and applying patches. Uh, you know we we touch uh, CF from an app perspective. We're 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 in there working with it all the time. Um, and, and the most we ever have to reach out, I think, on a, on a regular basis, is to say, Hey, Kevin, we're going to push five new app instances out. Do we need to bump a, to another Diego cell or not? Um, but other than that, we, we don't we don't touch it. Um, we, we we push to it, um, and 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 these guys are behind the scenes doing all the work. It is. Um, it's it's is it's using the latest Genesis, right? Yeah. So. Okay, Asia? Yes. Right. Yeah, and that was one of the interesting uh, the interesting dilemmas was uh, while the Azure hypervisor support was brand new, but but existed, um, the 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 Genesis you know scripts had to be converted because this was the first time 
I think that you guys were deploying to like open source to Azure, um, and we had to, you know, I say we, um, Jeff and Dennis had to uh, con convert existing AWS scripts to to uh, you know work with Azure. It wasn't a lot of work that I can recall, um, but but yeah, it's all running through through Dennis's. Talk to that, Amir. Um, it is expensive, yes. Uh, but, uh, it, I mean, Jared answered this pretty well before. Um, we were at the maximum you could put on a WebLogic JVM, which is 8 gigs of RAM. I mean, that's it, you're done. But you can't scale it any farther. We'd have to go into clustering in order to even figure that out. And then we could lose customers. So, like, the question is, is losing all those customers and having, like, a scale JVM cheaper than your Azure costs? Like, that we didn't want to play that game. So, we have maintained business, we've grown, and it is significantly more expensive than running a WebLogic JVM on a VMware internally, but um, it's worth it to us because, you know, we don't, we don't want to go out of business. Like, that's the other option. So, I think it was a cost we had to spend. Mm -hmm. did, did you scale the... the did you, did you, I mean, collocate more than usual uh, push jobs in order to lower the VM footprint on Azure and lower the costs? Or did you just use CF deployment standards no. scaling? Kevin, I don't, know. I don't know if you even recall the, the, the inception. I think we had 10 in production. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like 10. It's, 10. it's about 10. In, in prod.